I am Teacher Arian Cabanes, and we are now on the second week's lesson for the second quarter period. In this particular lesson, you are expected to determine risk factors related to lifestyle diseases, understand the importance of healthy lifestyle and weight management in the enhancement of your fitness, and practice healthy eating habits that support your lifestyle. So before we discuss our main lesson, let us first have our recap of our previous discussion. Let's try to answer these questions. Which of the following components are under skill-related fitness? If you answered speed and agility, then you are correct. Next, which of the following components are under health-related fitness? If you answered body composition and muscular endurance, then you are correct again. Now for the last one, I want you to fill in the blank with the correct word. Blank is an individual's preferred pleasurable and enjoyable activities in which they engage during leisure time. If you answered recreation, then you are correct. Good job! This means you have learned from our previous discussion. Before we go to our lesson, I want you to answer these following questions. Do you consider yourself overweight? If so, how long have you had a weight problem? What attempts have you made to lose weight and what has worked best for you? And lastly, what do you think is the key to weight management? Why do you think it will work? I'll give you time to answer this. Now, I want you to look closely in this picture. What do you notice from the two persons in the picture? That's right! You might notice that they both have big body shape but person B is much bigger than person A. This is because person A is overweight, while person B is obese. So what is the difference between overweight and obesity? Overweight and obesity are not the same thing. Many overweight people who weigh about 10 to 20 pounds over their recommended weight are not obese. Both are used to identify people who are at risk for health problems from having too much body fat. However, the term obese generally means a much higher amount of body fat than overweight. Did you know? Research indicates that individuals who are 30 or more pounds overweight during middle age lose about 7 years of life, whereas being 10 to 20 pounds overweight decreases lifespan by about 3 years. Severe obesity or BMI greater than 45 at a young age, nonetheless, may cut up to 20 years off one's life. This is why it is very important that we keep a well-balanced lifestyle combined with a healthy eating habit. Here are some of the health consequences of excessive body weight. Poor female reproductive health, menstrual irregularities, obstructive sleep apnea and respiratory problems, congestive heart failure, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, psychological disorder which includes depression, eating disorder, distorted body image, discrimination, and low self-esteem, shortened life expectancy, decreased quality of life, gallbladder disease, stroke, and gout. Being underweight, overweight, or obese may be an effect of these different eating disorders. Let us now discover what these different eating disorders are and their harmful effects in our body health. The first one is anorexia nervosa. This is an eating disorder characterized by self-imposed starvation to lose and maintain very low body weight due to false or distorted perception of being fat. The second one is bulimia nervosa. 
This is an eating disorder characterized by a pattern of binge eating, then purging in an attempt to lose weight and or maintain low body weight. People with bulimia may secretly eat large amounts of food with loss of control over the eating and then try to get rid of the extra calories in an unhealthy way. Third is binge eating. This is an eating disorder characterized by uncontrollable episodes of eating excessive amounts of food within a relatively short amount of time. This is commonly characterized by compulsive overeating or consuming abnormal amounts of food while feeling unable to stop and the loss of control. Fourth is emotional eating. This is the consumption of large quantities of food to suppress negative emotions. People refer to emotional eating as eating to cope with negative emotions. More specifically, emotional eating in order to relieve negative emotions would qualify as a form of emotion-focused coping, which attempts to minimize, regulate, and prevent emotional distress. There is no single main cause of these eating disorders. Several factors are generally a combination of genetic and psychological factors, problems within the family circle, and or the cultural and social environment. If you notice a family member or friend who seems to show signs of an eating disorder, consider talking to that person about your concern for his or her well-being. Although you may not be able to prevent an eating disorder from developing, reaching out with compassion may encourage the person to seek treatment. Now, another important factor in achieving a healthy lifestyle and effective weight management is having a well-balanced diet. I know that you are all familiar with these three basic food groups, the Go, Grow, and Glow foods. Let's discover what each food group does to our body. The first food group is the Go Foods. These foods give our body heat and energy. Foods rich in carbohydrates, starch, and sugar are included in this group. Examples of foods rich in carbohydrates and starch are rice, corn, bread, oatmeal, macaroni noodles, potatoes, kamote, gabi, cassava, and other, and some foods rich in sugar such as cakes, candies, Honey, jam, jellies, molasses, and ice cream are also considered go foods. The second food group is the grow foods. These foods repair and build our body cells and tissues and it makes us grow. Foods rich in protein are included in this group. Some examples of foods that are rich in protein are poultry foods, meat, meat products, eggs, milk products, fishes, shrimps, crabs, mango beans, gelatin, soybeans, peanuts, and cereals like rice and corn. Lastly, we have the glow foods. These foods regulate and protect our body. Glow foods are rich in minerals and vitamins. Some examples of these glow foods are mineral-rich foods such as milk, cheese, fish, shellfish, banana, apple, orange, green peas, beans, lettuce, and spinach, and vitamin-rich foods such as green leafy vegetables, yellow fruits and vegetables, and citrus fruits. Are you familiar with Pingang Pinoy? This Pingang Pinoy serves as a visual tool to help Filipinos adopt healthy eating habits at mealtimes by delivering effective dietary and healthy lifestyle messages. This is a project of the Food and Nutrition Research Institute or FNRI of the Department of Science and Technology or DOST in collaboration with the World Health Organization and National Nutrition Council that aims to provide a visual tool to guide Filipinos in consuming the right amount of food in every meal. Pingang Pinoy is a food guide using a food plate model to show the recommended proportion by food groups in every meal intended specifically for Filipinos. This food guide also promotes a physically active lifestyle and encourages Filipinos to eat less salty, fried, fatty, and sugar-rich foods to prevent chronic diseases. You can use the Pingang Pinoy as guide to a well-balanced and healthier meals for you and your family. This time, you will try to build your own wellness plate. 
Make your own by applying the Movaba Principle. Movaba Principle means moderation in serving portions, variety of food types, and balance of food types. Make one wellness plate meal plan for your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. For your food choices, you may refer to the given food examples from the Pinggang Pinoy 14s. Here is a sample of Pinggang Pinoy intended for teenagers like you. Now you may start planning your meals and stick to it so you can have a well-balanced diet. Always remember that good nutrition is an important part of leading a healthy lifestyle. Combined with physical activity, your diet can help you to reach and maintain a healthy weight, reduce your risk of chronic diseases, and promote your overall health. Maintaining a healthy lifestyle and keeping a track of your healthy eating habits lowers the risk for developing any sort of chronic diseases. Not just this, but it also improves our mental health while adding up to physical aspect. So that concludes our lesson today. I hope you learned something from the topics we have discussed. Once again, I am Teacher Arian Cabanas from General Ricardo G. Papa Senior Memorial High School. Thank you for listening and see you in our 